World War II, the defining moment in American history, the United States came of age, serving as the arsenal of democracy and sending millions of fighting men overseas to protect the free world from the ravages of tyranny. In 1942, Syracuse University was a pioneering war service college, offering pre-induction training to the largest contingent of Air Corps men in the country. As the war progressed, President Franklin Roosevelt had the foresight to recognize that once their task was completed, the men and women who fought to ensure our freedom must return to the possibility of jobs, homes, and families. We are today laying plans for the return to civilian life of our gallant men and women in the armed services. When the lights go on again all over the in a single stroke of the pen, the GI Bill of Rights effectively created the great American middle class. The GI Bill changed America because this was the first time that people of modest means could go to college. When I enrolled in college, only about 7% of the high school graduates even thought about going to college. And thanks to the GI Bill, it enabled returning service people to to enter college, many families for the first time. Syracuse University, under the leadership of Chancellor William Pearson Tolley, responded to this influx of veterans by creating temporary classroom space in hastily assembled Quonset huts and prefabs. Students were housed in gyms, trailers, and at off-campus sites. Campus was crowded with metal buildings where I held most of the classes I took in my freshman year. And I remember standing endless and endless lines to uh, register where people passed out tent packs of cigarettes. It was a huge class. In fact, I think the class in electrical engineering in 1945 was larger than the graduating, the entire graduating class in all disciplines at Syracuse University. At the university acquired the rights to use the carrier plant on Thompson Road, and we transferred a lot of the engineering classes out there. We rode a little blue bus without heat every morning. The campus bent itself out of shape to accommodate people. Uh, people just lived everywhere. Overcrowding was the order of the day, but so was cooperation. People bonded together, and Syracuse University's can-do spirit rose to the challenge as SU opened its doors to any and all who wanted an education. Married students, earlier forbidden, were welcomed at SU. Trailers rented in Mud Hollow for $25 a month to young families, and students shopped at a cooperative grocery store set up by veteran students. These serious students worked hard to make up for the time lost in service to their country. They were given the opportunity to earn an education, and they were driven to succeed. While the professors were understanding of the difficult situation and adjusted and helped as best they could, the university standards would remain high. Yeah, that was valedictorian in high school, so I was, thought it was pretty smart. And the first test I got back, my mark was 41. I said, wow, 41. <laughs> I didn't know I was that stupid. That was one of the best marks of the class. <laughs> there was only one other girl in, in the class with me at first that I knew, but then there were about three others or four others, and, and a couple of them finished, but two or three of them dropped out for one reason or another. The faculty, uh, of course, went all out and did their part to help the returning GIs in that they opened their homes because many of us had not studied for several years. So it was kind of a new, it was a brand new environment from a transition from a military life to a, to a uh, civilian. Between the demands for studying and working, our heroes had little time for pleasure but one of their great joys was watching orange sports. For the game with Colgate, campus festivity sweeps to a high point with traditional mummery and merrymaking. What could be more important than to promenade to the big game, a lively girl on your arm? Nickel beer Charlies and the orange and uh, co-ed dances, etc. It was a great time. Fraternities were strong for the obvious reason that uh, housing was so short in such short supply. 
that the fraternities and sororities fill the real need in that they provided housing for, for quite a good number of students. Everybody knew the Deeks. They had a reputation. And they had to get the ladies back at uh, 10 o'clock and they kept good track of Things have changed a lot now. And things changed tremendously in the 40s and 50s. Families expanded, houses were built and sold in record numbers, and wartime technology was adapted to the demands of an increasingly prosperous consumer market. One driving force behind this technology boom was an educated class of engineers, like the ones produced at Syracuse. Most of us, having been in the Army, felt that engineering was, was the uh, wave of the future. The technologically, the country was going to need engineers. I was amazed to hear them tell us that uh, the future was with chemical engineering because of uh, plastics and electrical engineering because of the invention of something new called a transistor. Beyond merely finding employment, Syracuse engineering graduates found something more significant in their classroom experience. They found the formula for success. Of course, engineering is a, is a, is a occupation that you continually have to keep going, learning, uh, keeping up with the latest, moving on. So my, my time at Syracuse University provided the basic part of that and it gave me the incentive to keep learning, I think. I am forever indebted to uh, the university for uh, the help they gave me during that period. And there's no question but what getting a engineering degree, getting a, a uh, professional engineering degree was very, very instrumental in my post-war opportunities. The generation that persevered through the Great Depression, who gave their all in World War II, has been called the greatest generation. We stood supreme in the world. We had won uh, major victories. Uh, we faced the future uh, bright and uh, got on with uh, family life. The start of the baby boom, it all came out of the GI Bill. The College of Applied Science, forerunner of today's L.C. Smith College of Engineering and Computer Science, is proud to have been a contributing factor in the lives of so many of these brave men and women, and is truly honored that these alumni have created a better and safer world for all.